game is called Friendship, uh, and it is about how far you would go for your best friend. What would what would you do for your best friend? It's all based around um, a simulation of the Holocaust in a way. How do you play? How how can you play or should you play the Holocaust? And we were in talks with some Israeli game designers, and as you know, the Israelis they are very they have a very different perspective than the Germans on you know what ca what you could do and how you can joke about the Holocaust. So um, we thought, um, though we are Germans, we're trying the best uh, you know we can to do a game about the Holocaust, and it should also be an educational game. So it should be um, you know for the classroom, so people. Students in the classroom should play it and should get, you know, learn from that, playing that. And uh, it should be unbiased, but, but because of course, you know, if you if you play the Holocaust and you know you're the bad guys, you, would, you wouldn't behave exactly like the bad guys because you know you end up, you know, being the bad guys. So, so how do you actually create something um, that puts you in a position where you? don't really know the outcome where you don't really know if you're the bad or the good guys or what is good and what is bad uh, at least to some extent so we created an, an online um, multiplayer um, asynchronous game which um, a full classroom from 10 to 40 people or at events uh, like this one for example um, can play um, as homework in, in case of um, uh, the school class because you know all the teachers we talked to in the, in the last years they are like yeah well we have our stuff going on th in the classroom but no one wants to do homework so why not playing a game as a homework right people think people like that teachers like that and also um, students like that and the game is constant is, is running for five days or five turns because it's 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 a you know multiplayer game but then again it's not you don't have to be live at the same time online, because that would be complicated for doing homework, right? So it's 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 counting by day, and and therefore it's kind of five turns. So in in five days you develop from being you know um, a normal social system, you're going through the development of the society that we create, that we simulate into a hostile dictator-run system, and in the end you have a voting, and you you have three different endings, and depending on how you played. The five days before, you have you end up with three different endings, and from that you get lots of statistics how you played, and then you talk with the teacher. And after you, uh, you you've talked with the teacher, you get these insights. So why did I choose to, to do something, and what did I what did I choose under which conditions, and what does this mean? What what is the relation to the Holocaust for that? You know. Because for everything we do um, and everything which is, are we, simu are we simulating, we are simulating ac how actually the, uh, the Nazis, you know, created this system. Because it was very effective. It was how, how they created um, the, uh, the system that they could force, uh, you know, Jews and everyone, in uh, ma many, many people in Germany at that time into believing that... <laughs> Um, you know, Jews are the bad guys, and that we should just, you know, deport them and kill them. That's kind of strange um, from today's perspective, um, but back then it was very, very logical for everyone, um, or for most of most of the people. And and we are putting the, the players in a situation that after five days they realize, well, you know, it's a little bit like, you know. Even today, you know, we are putting into far right positions. We are, we are, we are listening to, to politicians who are, who are, you know, saying there was no Holocaust, or who are saying, well, it's not, it's not been so bad, and all of these things. You know, we are, we are kind of repeating history uh, to some extent right now. Let's see how far we go. But. Giving our daily tasks, 
So each of the players has to, has to work and has to work together with friends. So you actually have to make friends in the game. You make friends and you like friends. It's like a simulation of, of a social system, like Facebook in a way, to some, to some extent. And, uh, and the more you work and, and the more you like stuff, um, you know, the more friends you make. But then some of your friends um, have a different origin. We don't, we don't call it race, but we call it origin. So there's five different races, in a way. And one of these races, like, and no one knows which, you know, over time is, you know, plays the Jewish race, in a way, you know? <coughs> and, um, and then at some point, you, the captain tells you, well, if you're friends with this race, you have to work more or you don't get enough money, or we don't let you, you know, on, on the upper deck anymore because we don't like this race, you know? And then, <coughs> to some extent, you realize, you know, what you're gonna do, are you just quitting your friendship with these people, with, or are you helping them, are you rebelling against uh, the, the captain, are you trying to overtake the ship, or not? And that's what it's all about in the end, um, to, you know, simulate a system and you are able to crash it. You are able to crash the system. <coughs> so we do this with ship decks, we do this with, with clicker games and uh, with voting. So at each day uh, you can vote. You can vote you, someone up or down one deck. There's five decks. First deck is the best deck, lowest deck is the worst deck. And uh, you, you vote your friends, right? And the goal is to get on top, but um, it's kind of a fake goal because in the end it's not, you're not the winner if you're on deck one, but winning is a different meaning. Winning is surviving. Winning is being able to choose um, the right ending. But the question, and that's a workshop, it's not the talk for me, the question for me here is really um, how do you how do you yourself feel about playing something like this? Can you play the Holocaust? Can you play unbiased? Or maybe that's not even needed. Maybe you should face harsh reality and you should call it by the name. What, what's, what's your suggestion? What, what's, what comes to your mind? I think playing, like having different outcomes will be in a way kind of like changing history, which is like tricky. So like, you know, I, would, I would think like, like well, maybe you know, maybe it, it always goes the same way, you know, you cannot change it. The only thing you can, you can do as a player is to accumulate enough evidence to use after. Right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 now how can you know know uh, know find those things and how can you actually know, preserve knows uh, what actually happened in order to uh, know to to, uh, to to have it after you know and and you know and have all the trials and everything else right but not actually you not know, changing the what you know could be the ending. Okay, well uh, let let me say that there's three different endings, but there's no ending where the bad guys wins. Okay. So. It's not possible, you know, you know, hey, cool, it's a Nazi game, let's, let's kill all the Jews, you know, it's not, not that. Um, but uh, it is kind of, uh, it's tricky, yes, you know, how can you choose three different endings? We were, we were, we were like, for a very long time discussing this uh, with the game designers, you know, how can you create something and that, you know, because if a classroom starts playing this game, they know it's history lesson and they know they were just talking about the Holocaust. May, or maybe it's it's ethics lesson or it's German lesson or there's maybe different ways you could use this game but um, they know the context already so they are kind of biased from the beginning even if they don't really know what it's really about they are like you know why are we playing this you know what's this you know they are cautious it's not like hey you know it's not like World of Warcraft let's, let's, just, let's just hack and slash through it you know so that's that's something we know it's it's really difficult and it's the storytelling is really important, but it has to be a game that you know is interactive because we 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 felt and we knew it's a different kind of storytelling, and we really have the, the biggest you know empathy and the biggest learning people take away if they realize oh fuck I I did that you know it's not like yeah well other people did that I didn't no it's like I did that so that's what I think. Um, makes this game interesting, more interesting than reading a book, maybe. Um, or not interesting, but more an additional value to reading about it, you know? But then, of course, uh, we, have, we have goals and, and we have clicker. Does everyone know what a clicker game is here? No. Well, a clicker game is, is something that, uh, you know, 
it's a really simple game and it's just uh, you know it just takes time to click stuff you, you're just clicking ding 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 like this <laughs> and um, <coughs> it's it's being used uh, in by a lot of the telltale games um, uh, um, that is it's very effective actually and there's lots of young players um, it doesn't make doesn't make sense there there is no it's not it's kind of a game mechanic thing but these mini games that we have they don't have their own meaning it's not they don't have goals really it's just clicking away time to to get money and that's that's the basic principle about clicker game that it kind of it, it doesn't disturb the main game but it's kind of an add-on to let people you know be able to collect money or collect something or to get further in the game to progress um, and maybe I'll let them see. So an another another question that I would like that I'd like to put here in this in this in this thing is, what kind of goals you know? What kind of goals do you think are appropriate when you want to simulate um, a system like the Holocaust? <coughs> how far how far do you think you would you could go? Um, by simulating, what what goals could there be? Could it be like you know, if your friends like could I mentioned like one of the things um, uh, players are being uh, asked in the end is you know unfriend your friends, let them go down the drain, the lowest deck, the ship is sinking. Um, is this something that you find appropriate, or what else do, can you think of? Well, you said it's possible to rebel against it and kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, Organize a protest in some yeah. sort, and I would wonder how uh, how you can communicate through that film because that I would think is a really cool uh, goal. Yes, um, th it's possible to protest, and it's funny because um, the the system, the game gives you the ability to protest also from from day two on, and and you get the response, oh yeah, we take you seriously, but in the end, you means you're being punished. Because uh, the system knows that you protested, and so you're being punished on day three because you protested. And uh, <laughs> in the end, it still counts that you protested, so you get additional points to use in the final vote, where you can, you know, over overthrow the system. But it's uh, uh, many things in the game um, are being done in a way that you don't get direct, honest, clear feedback from the game itself, you know, um, in terms of this is what you do and this is what it causes it, because that's not what happened in real life, uh, in history. People weren't told truth from the beginning. It was all organized in a very shadowy way before, I mean, there were, I mean, you know history, right? I mean, people went went to the main, to the train station with, you know, they, found, they, they thought they're going, not on a vacation, but they thought they, they were going somewhere else, not to, you know, um, the chimney. Um, so that's kind of um, also something we think is important to show, um, to reveal to the people that trust, well, it's not fake news in a way, but um, it's not always true what people tell you, and not in games, not in real life, and especially not when it comes to such topics. And uh, even, it's, about, it's testing friendships in a way, you know? It's testing friendships. And what other ways can you do to test friendships? That's really an open question again. What What do you think could be done in a game, in a multiplayer game, to test friendships? Come on, it's early. Do people know? Is there a reference to the real uh, player? No. no. <coughs> in the end, in the end, uh, it's being revealed um, what all, what what the uh, you know what steps and what kind of um, yeah. What is the representation of what you played? You know, so that you can see, oh, this is this, this is this. You know, it's not fake. All I played now was the system. Uh, it's just it just has a different name, but it's exactly how it happened back then. And how you name the different origins? Well, it's that's uh, it's kind of a fantasy origin. That's where they come from. It's like different cities. It's very you know, because we don't call it race. That would be you know too too obvious. But it's in the end, it doesn't matter really if you say a different city or different country or whatever. It's, it's kind of, we think it's not, people know from the beginning, one of them is going to be the, 
you know, the guys who are going down the drain. So what am I, what, am I going to be the one? Because it's, it's, you don't know. You log in, I can show you the game. So that's the game. Welcome to friendship. Then uh, we create game sessions. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> no, no. So we create game sessions so that like there can be hundreds of players, uh, hundreds of games at the same time. And then we, uh, you have um, each, of course, each of the uh, game sessions has, um, each player has its own password <coughs> and then you, you get in. And then this is, um, you know, there's a little introduction at the beginning. So this is your player and you have likes, you have money, you have origin and you have a name. Then you know you have to pay contributions, and then if you don't pay a contribution because this is day two, then you are um, you are sent. Uh, there's news from the captain. The captain um, tells you what to do, <coughs> and then there is ship market, so you can buy stuff. You you can if you have enough money, you can you can go one deck up, or you can sabotage, uh, or you can buy yourself protection, or create a fake ID so that you can actually change your origin for one day, and you can you can donate money to friends. And then this is what you need to do: is shoveling coal. That's the clicker game, you know. Yeah, because we are already on the second day. No, day four. No, this this is gonna be here for a while because we didn't play. We're really bad. Yeah. Th then it's like this tells you how to play. Well, anyway, so this is actually how how it works. Here you can protest. Here here you you have news. There is no news. <laughs> you can befriend people, and they have to friend you back. So it's not possible to just make friends like this, you know. Um, this is the news. Here, you here you vote. You can vote up or down. Uh, I want Arthur to go down and this Arthur to go up. Next next day. And there is you can go to deck. So, um, so this is like the deck. Deck one to deck five, and everyone's on deck five because we didn't play. <laughs> we are gonna die. Um, and and of course you you can if you have uh, friends then you can you can like them and only you can work also only with friends and this is how it works. You you work here and then you shuffle. This is how you, this is like <laughs> this is this is this is a clicker game. <laughs> yeah, I got money. And if I work together with people, with friends, then I would of of then I would get paid more, much more. But this also means it puts you under pressure. Just think from the player's perspective, right? You're sitting at home. It's six o'clock. I want to watch my, you know, not Disney, but I want to watch my my favorite new, uh, you know, telly show or no telly, but Netflix show. Um, <laughs> And and then it's like oh fuck you know uh, I really need, need need to get this done because if I'm not reaching 2,600 this day I'm gonna go one level down unless I have enough money from the first day or from the previous day to buy me a protection or to buy me a level up or am I am I voted up or down and this depends on how how good I work with people because if I put if I put like uh, my friends in into here. I really want, well, I don't have friends here, <laughs> but if I had friends, then uh, if I play and they don't play with me, they don't work with me together, then I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of fucked because I need them to play with me to earn more money. So um, only if everyone plays with me, um, this is kind of, you know, you know, this is kind of like in, in the kindergarten, you know, you play with friends and that's how, that's how you do it. And that's also how you uh, make sure to please your friends to vote for you and to get likes. So that in the end, um, you are actually able to um, you know, have enough, uh, collected enough money, <coughs> be it on deck five or on deck two or deck one, uh, it doesn't matter. In the end, uh, you can still change your mind. You can, you can see, oh well, this, is, this has gone wrong. I might have been on deck one and I cancelled all my friends with, with this one race which I was told by the captain, but everyone's opinion is taken seriously. <laughs> no. Um, and in the end I can still change and vote against the captain and overthrow him. So 
up until the very last moment I can re-decide. My path is not set just because I acted how I did in the first five days. And that's one of the big learnings for the students. That no matter how far you went into and how much things you, um, you, know, uh, you know, did wrong, there is and how much harm you did and you can't, you can't undo the harm you did. But what you can do is to use in the end all the power you have to vote, to vote for the right thing. And um, I guess that's very easily to, un to be understood uh, in Poland where everyone is uh, you know, baptized. But no one goes to church now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so um, that's that's kind of a sim similar thing. But having seen that, and I saw some nodding, and I saw some smiles, and I s maybe also saw some questions in in the faces. So how do you think this this works with children? I think it depends a lot on how the um, teacher is analyzing it afterwards and how they are discussing about it. Yeah. Do you provide? Yeah, we, we, we provide a, a full deck, um, how everyone voted, how much money and how much friends and how much likes uh, and on which decks people were. <coughs> and so you can really analyze a lot as a teacher. The funny thing is we had this discussion about privacy and about, you know, if we get like, ev if we get every click and if we then discuss how bad someone was, will it put people in different situations? And then <coughs> also a thing, just think of a classroom, so, you know, that we are not a classroom. Like in a real classroom, you would be at like the the chick click, uh, and 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 you were like the the, the nerds. And in the, in the back, there were people who just hate class and hate history class, especially, you know. And so, in real life, there is clicks, and in in in, in game life as well. We don't. Uh, these are all fake names. So but if like, sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't students know like. Well, exactly, which, yeah. exactly. So that that's the, like that's the point. Class. You don't know, but we know that people talk about it, and so eventually it's like, who are you? Mm. You know, am I liking the right person? Is this really you? Mm -hmm. So there is this conflict or this this mixture of real life mixing with fake life, and there's also bullying in schools. You know, so you could say, oh, I, this guy in the back, you, you guy, you, you, I hate you. You know. And that's why I'm not voting for you. I just want you to go down. You have to be down. And this can happen. And of course, it's, it's a game. But sometimes games are, can be very powerful and very you know, uh, dangerous um, in terms of you know, that they enhance social um, systems within the class. We haven't experienced that. And we have taken measure uh, that it can't go totally wrong. Um, but of course, it's like with every game, you can misuse it. So it's really up to the to teacher and, and to the class itself to be confronted. And in this case also, I guess it helps us because people are less likely to, to misplay if they know like it's simulating kind of a really you know, serious thing. So it has a positive you know, point as well that people might actually know that this is simulating the Holocaust. But are you, so you're telling them beforehand, you're telling them that it's simulating Holocaust? No, no, oh but, no, but it's up to the teacher. If he wants to, he can. We, we don't have control of the teacher. We just <coughs> recommend you not doing it. People will find out, people will realize. If it's, if it's history class, then of course, usually and nowadays, because at least in Germany, the curriculums change a lot, there is more um, freedom for teachers and there is more um, well very very slow and and there is also more ideas about using interactive and using games um, in schools outside traditional classes and so this doesn't need to be in history class. if it's like in an ethics or in a religion uh, class then it could be anything you know it's like hey let's let's play the Vatican you know <laughs> you know you could tell anything um, but yes, that's 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 a valid valid thing. You know, is this uh, complicates these things? But do you see any other challenges for this such a game? How did you get it into the classrooms of Germany? Is it did you have approval by the Bildungsministerium? <laughs> uh, and I, I guess it's hard to. 
Well, we got recommended by some of the um, schools. What's it called? Uh, well, school uh, advisors mm -hmm. uh, from from the state, and then um, our distributor is very closely connected to schools. But there is not yet really a distribution of games or interactive stuff to schools. It's the the publishers, the, the book publishers are doing it a little bit, but they're very cautious. And then um, it's it's really hard to get there. We are uh, we are working with the, the distributor who's also uh, distributing films for educational purposes to schools and to media, um, you know, uh, associations. But it's it's tough. So we went to all of all of these uh, fairs, like the Dacta and, and these, you know, uh, you know, educational fairs, where you, where you meet all all the hip and open teachers mm -hmm. who are interested in that, but you don't meet the teachers who just want to read their books for the next twenty years. So it's it's very it's very difficult to get into the market and to reach teachers. It is yeah. So in the end, it's about the teachers. It's about trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about the teachers. Okay. The teachers. Well, it's all about the teachers in the end. If if you know about um, if you know about how school works more, uh, the, the more we know about it. You know, teachers are so powerful. Uh, it's incredible how they choose what they want to do. And um, even if the, the, the head of the school says, you should do this, they're like, no, I'm doing it my way, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's really winning them over to see what kind of tool they have here. You know, no one would do homework anyway, or they hate it. And so why not do this? And they can do whatever they, they can use every game they would like to use? Or do you yeah, they could, but there are, there are no games out there like this. This is the first ever yeah, sure, game about the Holocaust. Well, it's not the first one. There is, there is, there is another one uh, which is not really a game, but it, an Israeli game designer crea created something where you, where you do, um, uh, you, you, you put trains. So you are, you are putting trains into the right directions. In the end, you realize that you put trains to get to the uh, concentration camps. So that's you know, just following rules and in the end you don't think about what, you know, just following orders means, but it can happen that following orders means you kill a lot of people. Um, of course, I, I guess every one of you know Papers, Please. So that's a game that has, th that got a lot of rewards and, and, and a lot of, you know, acclaim because they put you in a situation where you just follow orders and then you are put into, like here in a way, uh, you need to decide do you do you do it like the captain ordered you or do you do it differently and do you accept you know the penalty of not following the system um yeah this is just a little bit more complex and it's a multiplayer game and while papers please is a single player game but um it it has to look very simple to play that's also why we use this um so you know what's this the stuff. feedback from the students from the pupils and yeah, what is your experience there? It's, it's, it's very, uh, very different. I mean, uh, some people like the clicker game, some people hate it. Um, the, uh, the system is working quite well in terms of, even if people know before that it's simulating the Holocaust, um, and after day three, they realize, after day three or five, you know who is being punished. Uh, there's a twist in it, so that first you think someone else, it's someone, some another race, but then it's not. So on day three, you realize, okay, this has this has to be the guy, this poor guy, uh, who has to work more, get less, and you know, it's just unfair in a way. And then you, you and then you realize, okay, if <coughs> I'm this person, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna just quit the game. That's also a thing. Do people quit the game? It's just like, oh, I hate it. You know, I, I don't wanna play. That's always happening the, in in a school class. It's like 20 people maybe, and there's like two people who just hate it, who just out of, you know, they just don't play. That's what they do. And then they're on deck five and still the game has to work without them. That's important. So the, the, the relation, which race is, you know, how many of each race is in the game is really important. That's why it doesn't work with five people playing. It has to be at least 10. And is the, is the group that's going down, is it a minority? Um, it is, it's not, no, it, well, it depends if, you, if, you, if it's 10, it's not a minority. If it's 40 people, it is a minority, yes. But it's not like, it's not two people that are going down the drain and the rest is, hey, 
it's really it's like a massive amount of, of people of friends so everyone um, it's very likely you have befriended someone that you that you are asked to be unfriended uh, that you ask to unfriend it's very likely and how do students react when they are part of the sorry how do the students react when they are part of the minority the, the ones that are going down well it's, again it's 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 different because some of them are you know not accepting their their destiny they're like no i can do it and actually if you if you're really working a lot and you hack away you know um, uh, your evenings you can still earn enough money to stay on the deck and if you if you have friends who donate money to you and you uh, are being voted up you can you can end up on deck two even even if you are the bad guys but it doesn't matter in the end because if the system wins in the end you are dead but if the system do the system doesn't win you will survive that's actually that's what the point the age group that you're working with? it's 14 to 18 <coughs> We, we thought we had also players in the range of 10 to 12 and um, because they don't know, they don't have this in history, it, it's interesting because they're not biased. You know, they're playing very differently. <coughs> like, yeah, let's play. You know, I don't know, I don't know, what's the Holocaust? I don't care, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the other thing, of course. Most people don't care about the Holocaust anymore. It's like, well, I don't even have any grandfather who, could, who told me about the Holocaust. My parents were born after the war. So I have no relation. That's one of the things. Um, people have no relation to this part of history anymore. And uh, you know, I'm not sure if you've seen this. There's documentary in, in, a, in a web project um, also about Holocaust Reloaded. It's from a German company called Gebrüder Beetz. And they, they used uh, footage from YouTube. I'm finishing. Uh, uh, they're using <laughs> f uh, you know, footage from YouTube and put together a film about you know what what kind of selfies and what kind of uh, Jewish no not Jewish Israeli school classes are still going to concentration camps that's part of their of their you know school life and then but when they go like to Auschwitz they're like hey cool Auschwitz let's take a selfie yeah 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 cool cool some of them do that and this is put into a film to show actually us you know we are like oh my god the Holocaust it's so sad and all of these yeah, people. But, but then it, they have a totally different relation to a certain extent. But then the film also reveals that, you know, they are, they are not reliving it. And, and Israelis have a different relation to Holocaust as well uh, than Germans. Um, but it's different than what is usually part in the classroom nowadays, what you are taught about the Holocaust, you know to be, um, you know, not reflecting about the future, but to learn just what had happened in the past. But what we want here is, we want people to reflect <coughs> how they act now, and yeah. not just say, oh, it was bad, what the Holocaust, but it can never happen, I would never do this, you know, I would never do this. Um, I just want to pause since this was a discussion, but I don't feel okay with, judge, mm. with judging um, children, Jewish children, who go to this death, like one week, um, and they just go from one camp to the other, and it's <coughs> it's a heartbreaking experience for many of them, and I think it's very judgmental what you're saying right now. So I'm sorry to interrupt. But no, no, I, I, I know, I know, and I, I but it's not the right place to have this discussion. So I'm just yeah. voicing this. If any of you are feeling like me, I'm just voicing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of some of us who might feel like that. So I'm just, I'm just saying that this is another yeah. side to the, to the. No, of of, of course, I'm I'm very extreme here, and and I want to be. Um, but of course, the film also shows the other side, and of course, there are there's many people who cry out and all of this. But but the basic thing is um, that uh, this film uh, and, and and our our also experience just shows that uh, the younger generation they they take this topic um, often in a in a different aspect as we did, or our parents did. And we need to, to think about that and, and, and see how we can actually, you know, move in the future and, and, you know, try to not relate always to the Holocaust, but to relate to actions today to make people understand, you know, about this and, and, and what it can lead to. And that's it. <coughs>
And please, that's, that's the reason why, by being so extreme, let's discuss if you have time later. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you. You're